Hey guys, Tech Rally here, and today we're going to be doing a front end eval exercise. If you haven't watched my previous videos, we've been just grinding through these front end interview tech problems because I want you to really practice and get used to these types of questions when getting ready for front end interviews. So if you didn't know what front end eval is, front end eval is a platform with free exercises so you could practice modern front end development interviews. Too often we talk about leak code and all of this other stuff that's out there. But with front end, it's a little bit different because they're going to really test you on your JavaScript, your HTML and CSS skills. So let's do another question and really get this front end skills ironed out and ready to go by the time we get to these interviews. The question that we're going to be doing is the rolling dice question. So let's read it and figure out how we can solve this problem. The prompt. Create a dice roller application that can roll anywhere from 1 to 99 six-sided dice. The dice should be displayed in a row of three, at wrapping as needed. So as you can see, there's a number of dice, there's an input field, there's a button to roll, and there's five dice because uh, the user put in five, and the faces should look as follow. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that is the look and feel of what our dice application should be. So let's look at the prompt again and figure out what we really need to do. So what we need to do is create a form here with a label called number of dice with the input field and a roll button. And based on whatever the user inputs here, we need to generate those number of dices. So if a user presses 10, we need to roll out 10 dices. If a user presses five, then it's five dices. And we need to randomize it. So as long as we're able to randomly choose one, two, three, four, five, or six, then that'll be good for us. What I want to do here is probably do the implementation side first and then do the styling of what we want to build out afterwards. So first, let's just see how we can generate these random numbers within a specific number constraint. And then we'll figure out the styling afterwards. So the first thing what we need to do is we probably need to create the form. So let's just remove this and then create our form. Cool. And here, let's just give it a class name of form container. And inside of our form container, let's just zoom it up one more. Let's uh, have a label. And then we'll do an HTML for uh, dice count. And here we're going to say number of dice. Cool. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an input field with a type of number. We'll give it a ID of dice count. We'll give it a min number of one and a max number of 99. So we can't go from any number that's negative or we can't go anything higher than 100. We'll make it required. And actually, one thing else that we want to do is that's it. Cool. And then the last thing we want to do is we want to create a button here in the form, and then we'll call it roll. We'll give it a type of submit. And since we're using React, uh, what we can do here is we're going to be doing the use state from React. And I apologize, I did not really specify that I was using React, but in this case, I'm just going to use it because the state management and just managing how many number of dices there are. And then after each dice, you got to figure out how many numbers are going to be on each dice. It's just a little bit easier to manage your data sets by using something like React. So this is a great, perfect example of a of a good time to use it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called number and another thing will be called set number. And here let's do an on change equals I wonder if I could save it and it'll go down. Cool. On change we'll do a on change call. Perfect. And we haven't created that on change function, but all we need to do here is just create an on change. And we need to pass down the event. And then we'll do uh, set number. Yeah, e.target.value. And on change 
here, we'll just give it a value of number. So let's just see if that works. Um, let's clear this out and then refresh. Five, ten, two, one. Actually, I need to console it out as well. So here I'll do number. Julios. Perfect. This is exactly what we want. And the next thing we want to do here is we want to give it a on submit on the form itself. So let's do that. So we'll say um, on submit equals handle submit. And of course, it's going to break because we haven't done anything with it yet. And then here, let's just do e dot prevent default. That's good. And so far, so good. Now we are able to submit a form, but we, we're not really doing too much with it at the moment. So what we need to do here in the handle submit is figure out how do we take the number and do something with it, right? Because essentially we know that if I console.log out the number here and then I press 12, it's going to be 121. Oh, no, I can't do 121. Okay, 25. Exactly. So now we need to figure out, all right, we need to create 25 dices here. And if we create 25 dices, we need to do something with it, right? So the idea behind this is that we've got to figure out how to generate a n random number between one to six based on the number of dices that we have. And in this case, if we have 25 dices, we're going to have to generate one through six 25 times. So to do that, we can use a little bit of some finagling with the array uh, functions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a mm, like a list, like a dice list. Set dice list equals a use state of an empty array. So this empty array will just contain um, just like numbers like this. Um, first, let's do the event dot prevent default and then Ideally, what we want to do is create something like this. Oops. That just has a bunch of numbers or elements in an array. So what we're going to do is we're going to call a function maybe uh, um, called hmm, generate list dice list equals this function. And in this function, we're going to return the array and parsing the int of the number and that because the number in itself is a string. And then we'll map it. And here inside of this map, what we need to return is a random number between one through six. And there is a formula here that you could kind of use. And I highly recommend you to either uh, look it up on Stack Overflow or try to understand how this works. But essentially, this math.random times by six will give you a number between zero to five, I believe. And what you need to do from there is that we can't have an actual number of zero because that's not really going to help us. So in the case that the number is zero, we want to add one to it. So if the number is five, then it's going to be six. If the number is four, it's going to be number five. And here we're going to set the dice list to a generate dice list function. And let's see if the dice list will give us a nice little array of numbers. So let's get rid of this. We'll refresh it and we'll do 10 roll. Awesome. You can see right now that we're generating a random list of numbers that goes from zero to nine. So 10 elements and they all have like five, three, four, two, one. And that's exactly what we want, right? We want to generate a set number of dices that go from one through six. So now that we have that, we should be able to render out um, that content. So let's just do that right now. So outside of the form, what we can do is we're going to uh, let's just create another div here on the bottom. And here we'll just say dice list dot map number and the index. And here let's just return the dice and we'll put the key as the index and then number equals num. 
and like that. Cool. Right now we don't have a dice component, so let's build that out really quickly. So on the top here, let's just do function dice of the props, and we'll just return um, maybe like a div. And then it says dice here. And then we'll just put um, number. And here, let's just do number. So ideally, what's going to come out is dice here and then pop out that number. So if I do five and enter, dice here six, dice here four, dice here six, dice here two. Cool. So we know functionality wise, we're able to make this work, right? It's, it's the ugliest UI so far, but functionally, we're able to do this uh, pretty well. Perfect. Uh, 12, 2. Awesome. So now let's just clean up this form a little bit to make it match this kind of look. So now that we've got everything working functionally, let's figure out how we can kind of style this. Uh, component right now. What I'm going to do is just wrap this form with another div here and put this in here. Julios. And then here, I actually am going to just use this class name equals, uh, actually, let's just call this the form container. And then we'll just call this the dice form. Cool. I apologize about that. And then what we're going to do here is call the form container and give it a display of flex. We're going to do a justify content center, which will make that centered. What else can we do here? Let's just give this a margin bottom of maybe like 20 pixels just to give it some spacing. We'll also do label display block. Perfect. And then we'll do input also display block. Julios. And then what, what is missing here? Why is this kind of not looking nice? So let me just expect the element really quick. Dice form is needing a little bit of love here. So here, let's just do dice form is also display flex. And then flex direction column. And so far, so good. I think I'm going to give uh, this roll button a little bit of uh, breathing room here. So I'll just do margin, bottom, maybe like 10 pixels. Sweet. So let's also give this one 10 pixels. Uh, actually, that's a little too strong. So let's just do 5 pixels. Sweet. Let's clear this out, refresh it. If I do 5, hit roll. Dice here three, dice here two, dice here four, dice here two. Cool. So now that we've got the top part cleaned up, how do we get these dices to look like this, right? So right now, the one button or the one dice is centered. The two has the bottom left, bottom or top right, and then so forth and so forth and so forth. So we got to figure out a way to generate these dices in a more um, cleaner way. I'm just going to show you how to do a single dice and then we can work our way from there. So rather than just kind of jumping into it, what I'm going to do here is just show you how maybe I could create a dice using um, like a center button or the center dice. So here I'm just going to create a div and then give it a class name of center. And then maybe in this one, I'll give it a class name of Dice. Cool. And last but not least, I feel like we need to somehow wrap this in a container. Class name equals dice container. Because eventually what we're going to need to do, from my understanding, is that we need to put them into rows of three. So, all right, so first things first, we got to figure out how to create these dots, right? Whenever we create a roll button here. So um, let's do that right now. So in my dice styles, I'm going to do just a border of one pixel, solid and black. 
and I'll give it a padding of 25 pixels. And then we'll give it a width of 100 pixels and a height of 100 pixels. Whoops, I spelled height wrong. Awesome. And now let's just try to put them in rows of three. So what we can do here is just do dice container and we'll use uh, display grid and then do uh, grid template columns, I believe, to repeat three times and then we'll give it a FR. Let's do a gap of 10 pixels. Sweet and justify items center so it could be more centered in sweet so these are our boxes or these are our cubes right so if we do two five one uh, not 51 eh? we could do 51 it'll come out 51 times sweet so now that we have all of these squares coming out we need to figure out how to style this uh what we want to do actually is we want to create another like layer essentially here. So what we can do just to show you what I want, I'm what I'm thinking is we'll call this um, dice inner, and we'll move the center into here. Awesome. So now what I'm thinking here is we got to give the dice some padding, which we've already done. And if I show you the dice inner, this will make more sense. So if I do dice inner, um, in this case, I'll just give it an outline of one pixel solid and green. And we need to give it a height of 100%. Sweet. And I think that's good. So what we're trying to do here is also give this also a position of relative. And now we're going, what we're going to do is essentially have our dots be positioned absolute relative to the corners and the center. So it's going to just make our lives easier rather than trying to do it against the actual cube. Because then you're going to have to like measure like crazy horizontal distances and vertical distances. But having an inner dice to be positioned absolute against is going to make our lives so much easier. So it's a little hard to explain, but please bear with me here. So I'm going to give this class name a dot as well. So we could style our dot um, class. And here we're going to do border radius of 50%. And we'll give it a background color of black. And we'll give it a height of 25 pixels and a width of 25 pixels. So it should show up kind of fat. And then we'll do a position absolute. Sweet. Uh, maybe we should make this 15 pixels so it doesn't look too fat. All right. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how the center works. So now that I know that I'm positioned absolute against this inner square, all we need to do is say top 50% left 50%. And then we'll do transform, translate, minus 50%, minus 50%. Sweet. So every one that's coming out right now is set to this like center component, right? And that's because all we're doing is giving a div class name dot center. So ideally, what we want to do is figure out, hey, if you are number one, then you're going to have a center class. If you're a number two, then you're going to have a bottom left and a top right class. If you're a number three, then you're going to have a bottom left, center, and a top right, and so forth, right? So like top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. And how we can do that is we can just create like a mapping. And um, rather than going straight into the CSS with all of them, I just wanted to show you one example of how a center class would work. What we want to do is we want to create a map of all the numbers associated to certain class names. So here, what we can do is we can create a dot map. And it's not a very uh, clever name by any means. But here, we'll say one is center. Two is a uh, bottom left and top right 
I believe. Bottom left, top right. Yep. Three is bottom left, center, and top right. Four is top left, bottom left. Okay. Top left, bottom left, top right, and bottom right. Five is same thing, except they also has a center. So let's just copy this. And here, let's just add a center to it. Cool. And last but not least, what we're going to do is uh, copy. Let's just copy this. And instead of center, we're going to say bottom left, middle left and top right, bottom right, and middle right. Because with the sixth one, it's everywhere except the middle. Cool. So now that we have that out of the way, what we can do here is say const uh, mapped values equals dot map of the number. Julios. And here, instead of rendering out individual divs, like how I did here with this hard coded value, what we're going to do instead is we're going to say mapped values dot map. And here we'll just say class name and index. And what we're going to do, I believe, is we're going to return a div with a class name of dot and the class name that's generated here. So let's do that. And if I do five, one, three, cool. So right now, the only thing that's getting styled is our center button or center dot, but everything else is not being styled. So all of the other ones are just being crunched up right here. So we just need to just move all of them accordingly. And the last thing I'm going to do here is just give this a key of index just to uh, satisfy these errors. Generally, you want to have some kind of associated IDs with it. But um, right now, for a case like this, where it's an interview setting, don't you don't really need to worry about it too much. So let's just get straight to it. Let's start off with the top left. So here, I'm just going to say, um, let's move the center out. And let's just do all the styling here. Dot styling. Dot styling. Cool. The so center. We'll do the top left. And just for you, I'm just going to give it a background color of red. And then I'll just show you how it's moving around. So top left would be top of zero. Left of zero. Uh, transform. Translate minus 50%. And it will also be minus 50%. The only tough one with this. Okay, cool. You'll see it right there. Perfect. Nice. The next one that we want to do is bottom left. So bottom left. And we'll give this a background color of blue. And we'll say bottom zero. Left zero. And maybe we could just refresh some of these. Maybe they'll show up. Not quite. Let's just figure out why that's not working. Oh, it's because I spelled bottom wrong. Bottom left. There you go. And now we just need to transform it all into the corner. So what we're going to do is we're going to say transform translate minus 50%, which will move it to the left. And then we'll give it a 50% up, which will move it down. Perfect. And let's also do middle left. And here, let's just give it a background color of yellow. And we'll say top 50%, left zero, transform, translate minus 50%. Cool. And then I believe we have to move it down 50%, I believe. Um, so let's just do that. 50% and we'll move it up there. Cool. 
And then so we got the center working, which is awesome. Now we need to do the top right, bottom left. All right, bottom right, and then middle right. So uh, middle right we need to do. And then we also need to do top right and then bottom right. So let's do the middle right first. So top would be 50%, right is zero. Transform, translate 50%, and then minus 50%. Julios. And I'm not adding the background colors because I'm hopefully these will be explanatory enough where you guys are understanding what I'm doing. The next thing we're going to do is the top right. So top is zero, right is also zero. And then we'll do transform, translate uh, 50% and minus 50%, I believe. Cool. And then the bottom right, we're going to do bottom zero, uh, right zero. Transform, translate, uh, 50%, then 50%, I believe. Cool. Sweet. So let's get rid of this green outline and these colors now. So it's not super confusing on what's going on. Let's save it. And we'll also get rid of our outline, which I was only using for uh, just to help you guys out here. Awesome. The dice is a little, or these little cues or whatever you want to call it is a little light. So what I'm going to do here is actually I'm going to make these 25 pixels. Cool. So let's lower this console. Let's roll the dice 10 times. And if we look at the picture, three is, yep. Six, sweet. So if I do five, two, 21, 100,000, doesn't let me do it. If I try negative one, has to be greater than one or two. Sweet. This is how you solve the rolling dice problem. What we essentially did was we created a form that generated an array of random numbers between one through six, X number of times. So X in this case is the number of times we put in this input field. And once we had a array of random numbers between one through six, we shoved it into our state variable called device list, or sorry, this dice list. And within the dice list, we created a component called dice. And every dice had a responsibility of figuring out, hey, what kind of classes will exist inside of each dice? So if you look at this one, there's going to be, I believe, three uh, dots one two three if you look at the other one here there's going to be two dots one two so every inside dot will always have a class name of dot but the thing that's changing is the bottom left and the top right so all we're doing here is we're using absolute position and we're positioning these dots relative to the inner square that exists inside of each square and that is how we're able to generate these dots and these dices with the appropriate numbers. So hopefully this made sense. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. But this is how we solved our rolling dice problem. If you made it to the end, thank you so much. If you like content like this, I highly recommend you to subscribe because I really want everyone to be as prepared as much as possible for these front end interviews. And even if you don't get a question like this, hopefully this helped you figure out how do I take a problem from a pure HTML CSS form to some JavaScript and do some unique CSS on it as well. So either way, thank you for staying till the end. And I hope this helps you in your future front end interviews. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.